Hey everyone, and welcome to episode three of my Game Mechanics series for Distant Worlds 2. Uh, so we're going to go over uh, ship tactics and fleet tactics and how they, what overrides which, how they go together. And I'll briefly talk about automatic fleet, so setting fleets for a defensive fleet or an offensive fleet. But the video is going to focus mostly on the tactics because I think that's the area where there's a ton of confusion and there's even things that I didn't know before watching this video and doing some tests about which tactic overrides which from fleets to ships. So you're going to find it very interesting. And it may also be the reason why some of you, including myself, have had a lot of issues with managing fleets manually. All right, so let's take a look. So let's start with ship tactics and then we'll talk about, and some of these do involve what happens in a fleet. So I'll kind of bounce back and forth a little bit. But let's go through the tactics in a ship. So if you select any ship and you click the set tactics button, you'll see all of the settings. There are six of them here that you can set for a ship. Now, you can and should set these when you first design a ship. So when you make a custom design and let's see what that looks like. So if I go over here to the design screen and click, you can see when you first design, it doesn't, it's not obvious to everybody unless you've watched one of the videos, including my own, that talks about this. But when you design a ship, you're focused on the components. But at the upper left-hand corner here are those same settings in icon form. And you click on one and pull it down to select anything. So I'm going to go through what all of these mean. But my overall point here is that you should set these for ships when you design them. And there's a reason for that I'm going to get into when we see... Uh, the fleet tactics and what overrides ship tactics is a big problem, potential problem. It may even be, I don't think it's a bug, but I don't think it's necessarily, or it's it's a confusing design if it's not the best design. And there really needs to be, I think, a new feature that allows you to decide a few more things. Anyway, we'll get to that and I'll talk about it. As I go through these settings from the ship view, I just want to tell you that they are here and the ship view will inherit these, right? So if you create a, a ship that you set to automatic, like you want to build uh, six frigates and let them go automatically so they can go escort freighters or they can defend a uh, patrol a system or defend a space station, they're not going to be part of a fleet. You're not going to use them, even though you may, like I do, use uh, manual fleets. These ships are going to go off and do their own thing, and you're not going to really uh, manage them and let the AI manage them. So it's important that you set these settings in that case where you probably won't individually override the settings from the ship view, okay? But for ships that we're gonna deal with in a fleet and we're gonna manage individually, what's gonna happen is it doesn't matter what you set there because in each ship view here, when you select these tactics and overwrite it, this will become the default, right? So in other words, once I change this from picket to close us, it doesn't matter anymore what the initial settings were in the design screen. So the design screen just sets all of these to whatever default values you create. Once you set these once in the ships, uh, while the ship is created and the ship is in the, set, in the screen you, and you click on the settings and you set these, it doesn't matter anymore what you initially set them for. But it is important for things that you won't change or for ships that you're going to create and don't want to deal with setting each one of them uh, and you're just going to let them go to automatic. All right, now let's go through what each one does. So the first one here, roll within fleet, is what happens when the ship is in a fleet? What position does it take? And there's three positions. So the attack position here, the first selection, uh, this could be renamed core it's the center of the fleet. This is where your ships are going to be surrounded by other ships. So you might put your carriers here and you might put some long range ships here that are going to shoot missiles, for example. So you might put your battleships and your carriers here, your cruisers here in the attack. And that is the default, by the way. The second setting is close escort. And what close escort does is it allows those ships to surround your attack ships, the ships in the inner core. And the final setting is for picket ships. And picket ships will surround the entire fleet, the both the close escorts and the, the attack ships. So I like to use frigates for pickets, and I like to build a lot of PD weapons into those picket ships. So the enemy missiles, for example, or other seeking weapons like torpedoes, 
or fighters have to go through my picket and face their PD before they get to my carriers or my battleships. So that's a, a pretty cool use for picket ships. And that's what I think I had defaulted for this frigate. Let me show you a picture. So here's a picture on the screen. Take a look at this. Here's a fleet that I made out of uh, three, uh, a carrier, two battleships, and a bunch of destroyers and a bunch of frigates. So the carrier and battleships, as I mentioned, are set for attack. That Notice they're at the center of the fleet. The destroyers are set for uh, close escort. And you'll see that they kind of clump around, not perfectly, but they clump around the... Uh, the, the attack ships, the battleships and the carriers. And then finally, you can see I've got frigates here for pickets, and they're roughly on the outside of the fleet. You can see, by the way, the entire fleet's form sort of a triangle rather than a circle. And the triangle is roughly facing in the direction that my fleet was moving, but it's not perfect, and the ships don't always face that way too. But if I did put them and set them to move uh, far away, to the left or something, they would follow that direction and they'd try to stay in this formation. Now this is set for loose. Uh, I normally don't worry about loose versus tight. We're gonna talk about that when we get to fleets, but this particular one is loose and you can still see they're kind of glommed together. And you can see that it's not a perfect arrangement, right? Some of the destroyers are near the edge here, but it gives you a rough feel of what's gonna happen. Is it super, super important? I really don't think so because once a battle starts and we'll, we'll look at a battle later, you know, it becomes a fur ball and uh, ships are everywhere and their ships jump in the center of your fleet. So, you know, I don't know how important it is. I, I use it. I set it. Um, I think in the initial part of the battle, it helps a little bit. But after a while, it just becomes a mess. And I don't know how, you know, critically important it is that you set that. All right. We'll take a look at that more when we talk about fleets. All right. The next one is engagement range. And this is super, super important. So the engagement range has... Do not engage, engage when attacked, nearby, same same location and same system, okay? So do not engage is something you never, you certainly don't want to set it for default. In fact, the design screen will give you an error when you try to do that. Um, you, it'll let you do it, but it'll give you a warning, I should say. So you don't want ever to set a combat ship to do not engage. And I'm going to talk about why when we get the fleets. Engage when attacked is also not a great setting for any one of these ships because they'll sit there. Somebody right next door to them will get attacked and they'll just sit there. I will demonstrate that in a little bit. You don't really want that. So nearby, same location and same system are nearby and same location means roughly in the, in, you know, the nearby uh, planet or the nearby base station. And of course, same system means in the same star system. So by default, the same system is usually a good setting to set for combat ships because the fleet will override this. So it's easy to make it more restrictive later. So by default, generally speaking, all the ships, the combat ships that you make, I recommend you set them to same system. Attack stance versus weaker and stronger. So it's not really so important with weaker, it's more important with stronger, but here's the general rule here, right? So there are four settings. You never really wanna set this to evade. That would be for freighters and colony ships and things like that. But cautious, neutral, and aggressive are the three that you may use, you know, for a combat ship. Now, the way it works is cautious doesn't set, do what it sounds like. Cautious is really keep your distance, okay? So for missile, you want to set to cautious. And what they'll do is when combat starts, they'll attack immediately, but they'll move into range just uh, at the edge of their range so that their missiles, they can hit with their missiles, they can keep their distance because missiles don't lose damage over range like torpedoes do and other weapons do. So if you have, if you're using missile technology, even if you're using a Canova missile, which is a combination of torpedoes and missiles, if you end up using missiles like that, cautious is a great setting. Aggressive is going to make them go up super close. So if you're using beam weapons or things with short range, even torpedoes to some degree, people argue that torpedoes are a range standoff weapon, but they actually do a lot more damage when they're close in and damage is everything as we've talked about in some of my other videos. Well, I would set torpedoes to either neutral or aggressive, maybe neutral, and they'll keep a medium distance between the range. And aggressive is, you know, good for everything else. What's the difference between weaker and stronger? Stronger is the one that matters. So if this is a, it is, this is a missile ship, by the way. So I'm going to set it to be cautious for stronger and I'm going to set it for cautious to be weaker too. It matters less because if the target is weak and it moves up close, it's probably not going to do damage to me. But for stronger targets, you definitely want it on cautious. So for missile ships, I set them both to cautious. I just set these both the same for all ships. Retreat when, 
basically tells you when you're going to retreat as a ship. And again, how this interacts with fleets, we're going to talk about in a little bit because it's important. But uh, retreat when enemy in the same system or same location or enemy nearby. Really, those are for freighters uh, and colony ships. And they, they do what they say. You certainly don't want to do that for a combat ship. And also when attacked is not a great setting here because, of course, the combat ship will just run away, right? We don't want that. So the one I use typically is shields blow 50% or any armor damage. That's a pretty good one. If you wait to 20% of non-defense components damaged, I think you're likely to lose the ship. You know, tw maybe shields blow 20% and armor blow 50% is a good one too. So I probably use one of these two by default. Okay. And then of course, never is if you want a particular group of ships to just fight it out and delay the enemy or something, you don't want them to run or you're expecting reinforcements. You want them to fight to the death. But again, the fleets, we're going to talk about how fleets override this stuff. So I'm going to default maybe to this one here, shields below 20% or armor below 50%. I think that's a pretty good one. Invade colonies. It, I'm never, you're never going to use this because I manually invade colonies. I don't have individual ships invading colonies, or I might set the entire fleet to do it, in which case the setting is irrelevant. So I really, really don't care about this, even for transports. So by default, if I'm making transports, I put when clear. And for other ships that don't have, I don't usually, you can put troop components on combat ships like battleships and things. In fact, the AI will do that by default. But I don't do it. I reserve transport solely to, to bring troops around. But if you do use combat ships to drop troops, then you may want to set this to be either when clear or never by default. So I leave that up to you. But I, I tend not to use this setting at all. Okay, that's the tactical settings for an individual ship. Let's check out a couple of demos of some of these things I've been talking about. Okay, uh, before we talk about fleets, let's go into a little testing. The first thing I want to show you is what happens when you set your engagement range to engage when attacked or actually even do not engage. Why would I maybe set a ship to this or even a fleet to this when we get to talking about fleets is if I have another fleet nearby or a bunch of ships that are standing by and I want to repair these ships or refuel them or re retrofit them, I don't want them to be disturbed, right? Because what's going to happen is if I set them to attack anything in the system, when one ship comes in as a threat, even though if I have 15, 20 ships in the zone, they're going to go after them. They're going to cancel the retrofit or the refueling, and they're going to go after the ship, and it's going to keep interrupting it. So there is a time when I want to set an individual ship to not engage or even possibly set it to engage when attacked. Because maybe the ship gets close enough that it's a threat. I do want it to break off from retrofitting. But it's a very rare thing. But what's cool, I do want to show you about do not engage. So both these ships will not engage. Is And I'm going to tell this uh, pirate here that the deal's off because I have a protection agreement. And then we'll slow it down to 0.5. So what happens that's really cool here, though, is even when they're set not to attack. So here it goes. So the pirate ship is going to start attacking them. All right, here it goes. So watch what's cool. Even though they're not going to attack, they will defend themselves with PD. So they're going to shoot uh, their PD weapons at the incoming uh, missiles. And this will work both in do not engage uh, and, of course, engage when attacked. So the fact that they're getting attacked, they would then start to engage. But right now, they're not going to fire any offensive weapons. They're not going to shoot at the base itself or any other ships that came in. Uh, but they will shoot at fighters and also missiles or ranged weapons or, you know, any weapon that the PD can handle. Let's talk about cautious versus aggressive. Okay, now let's talk about the setting of cautious uh, versus aggressive and neutral. So I've set this ship that has missiles to cautious. And really, like I've said before, a better way to have written this would have been to keep distance, right? To keep range. So that's what have been a better description for this or keep maximum weapon range or something like that. Because cautious makes like it sounds like it's not going to attack. It will. It'll attack just fine. But it's going to try to keep its distance. So I'm actually closer. If you look at this ship here, I'm actually closer than I need to be to fire missiles. So it, it, it may stay there, but it may also back up a little bit. If it was very close, it would definitely back up. It'll try to keep its distance. And what, versus other ships, it'll only work if its engines and thrusters are faster than the enemy ship. Otherwise, the enemy ship's going to keep closing. But if it is faster, it will attempt to keep range. That's what Cautious does. Now, this ship, of course, is set for 
aggressive, so it's going to move in close to the base. It's, even though its weapon can shoot from this range, it's going to move in very close. And because its weapon does more damage when it's close, I may actually prefer this setting uh, for this particular ship. So uh, I'm just going to make sure that we we don't have it not to be uh, don't engage from the previous exercise. So I'm just setting that, but it's cautious, right? Attack stance cautious, keeping range versus aggressive. Let's see what happens. All right, and I'm gonna I'm not gonna bother resetting the diplomacy. I'm just gonna attack, and we'll see what happens. Okay, let's let it run. So there it goes. The ship that's set for aggressive is gonna move in very close. Notice this ship, which is the missile ship set for cautious. It's gonna turn to the left, and it should try to keep its range. So it's gonna pull out of range. Yeah, it's, it's, see it's going left now, it's moving out of range where the other ship moved in close. Now, at this point, all of its close weapons can hit, so I don't think it's going to get any closer than that. But remember, it could be hitting all the way back here, right? So it's definitely well inside of its long range weapon play, uh, range. So now you can see, again, it's not full range, but it's pretty close to full range. So my missile ship, because it's set to cautious, has moved way back, and you can see this guy's moving up even closer now. And this will go on like this as long as the battle goes on. So I'm not really going to show you anymore, but just to show you what cautious setting does. It doesn't make them stop firing. You can see he's firing continuously. Uh, it doesn't make the ship less effective. It just makes the ship stay at long range to fire weapons. Okay, so now let's talk about fleet settings. Now, some fleet settings are going to override or interfere with ship settings. So what I want to do first is get out the easy ones that do not override or interact with ship settings. So the first one we're going to talk about is formation, which has nothing to do with individual ships. Okay, let's discuss uh, formation. So I've got my sixth fleet here with uh, two battleships, a carrier. These three ships are all set for attack within fleet. Roll within fleet is attack. So that means they'll be at the center. This is kind of a poor choice of these three words. I would have picked something else like core, uh, I don't know, uh, anything but attack. It doesn't make any sense, but attack means the center of your group. Close escort means hovering around and protecting that center group. And then picket, of course, is what it sounds like. It's the outside, it's the screen. I would have used screen here. So it's the ships along the outer edge. So as long as you have ships in all three of these, and I do, so my three big ships are set for attack. Uh, if I go to one of my uh, destroyers, I have it set for close escort. So there'll be the, the next ring, if you will. And the frigates are on picket, okay? And I have three, you know, 13, uh, no, le sorry, 11 of these pickets. I have seven of these close escorts, the destroyers, and then the battleship carriers are set for attack, which is like the core. Now, first formation we're going to look at is normal. So I've set it to normal. I'm going to grab my fleet here. I'm just going to move it over here so we're not bothered by anything else and uh, let them go. And I'm on four times speed just to make this a little bit quicker. So let's see what the formation looks like. And you see it takes a little, they'll adjust once they get there. So they're going to go to the point where they're supposed to meet. And then once these ships get there, or I guess right about now, then they're going to split up and form uh, their formation. So they try to arrive at the, they don't come in formation. They try to arrive at the point. See, now they're all scrambling to get onto their positions. And what's interesting here, and I've pretty much seen this every time I, I test this, is they're going to form, you'll see it in a second. They would just hurry up and get here. You see they're going to form a giant triangle, not a circle like you might expect. So, yeah, see, they're still readjusting to once the uh, the attack ships, the center, the core, settles themselves, then the other ships seem to arrive and uh, set themselves up. Yeah, so you'll see now, um, so I'll just draw a picture here. So you can see it's like a giant triangle. Okay, this is normal. We're going to t check the other settings for formation in a second, but this is normal. So you'll see here are my frigates right on the outside here. Uh, there's a destroyer right there, uh, but I I'll just circle them all for, all for you here. So let me circle them where the destroyers are. So these are all the destroyers. Uh, these are all of the frigates. So you can see the frigates are kind of along the outside, right? Mostly along the outside. The destroyers are kind of mixed in. 
with both a little bit, and then the core ships three form a triangle. So I didn't try even numbers, but I, I the shape basically stays triangular, but um, it does shift a little bit when you have even numbers of core ships in there. But it's very interesting that it's so it's always a triangle. Now it's very easy. You can do this yourselves at home. Uh, you can test the different formations once you get them set up like this. Just click the tactics and they'll change as you do this. So I'm going to go to very loose first and watch what happens, right? They spread out. Okay, that's very loose. See, they're still in triangular form. Not much has changed in the core there, but they're definitely a little more spread out. Uh, there's loose. They'll come a little bit closer together. Here they come. Tight. There they go. And then there's not much difference between tight and very tight. Watch very tight. I mean, it's gonna they're gonna crunch a little bit. Okay, there we go. You know, so does this make a huge difference? I mean, once the battle starts, everything goes, you know, goes out the window, right? Entropy takes over and uh, it just becomes a big furball and a big mess. But at least when you're coming in to a target or if you, uh, if you see me in my Let's Plays, uh, I kind of have a jump point that arrives a little bit out of range of the enemy and then they'll kind of form into a formation before they go in. If you're doing a surprise attack on a base, it might be better to have a tight formation so that all your ships get to fire first. Like when I go to pirate bases and take them out while we're still have an agreement. But generally, I don't think I've, I certainly leave mine on uh, normal most of the time and don't really see much of a difference. So I, I don't know that there's any particular advantage here. But, uh, you know, maybe if you're defending and there's a big fleet coming in and you want to make sure that your pickets, like my picket ships here have... If you look at their design, they have a lot of, uh, oh, they only have one. Okay. Oh, oh, actually, I'm sorry. I've set this to auto, right? I forgot. Uh, I've, st I've since stopped upgrading these, but when I had these set the way I wanted to, I had like two PDs and one, uh, regular weapon. So I had, a, I had two PDs. So they were definitely my, they were working well as picket ships for me. And so that I really wanted them to be a little spread out and to shoot the incoming fighters or missiles that are coming at the main fleet. So that, you know, that might be a reason to be loose or very loose, but I don't think it makes a world of difference. Okay, All right, let's look at the next one. Okay, let's get a nice easy one out of the way. So if you look below formation here, you'll see there's a setting, allow ship roll reassignment. The only time you really need this is if you didn't bother to set the ship's roll either back when you were designing the ship, which is the best time to do it, or manually for each ship for their own individual settings on the left side there. So over here where I'm, where I'm highlighting here. So if you've done that, if you've set, like I did the picket ships and the close escorts and tack ships, you don't really need to ever change this. But if you didn't bother to do all that, if all of your ships are set to attack, then you may want to allow the fleet to assign the roles and just change the setting uh, to the other uh, the other option there. So uh, if you're careful and you're designing your own ships, you don't have to worry about it. If you're not designing your own ships, definitely set it to the other setting and then be done with it and let the fleet handle it. I don't know. I haven't tested too much how well the fleet handles it. I know in the example I just did, when I click that, it doesn't do much. A couple of ships move their position because I already have it set up. But if you don't have it set up, it's going to try its best to figure out who goes where. Now, for the really, really confusing one that I discovered, for the that I finally understand only after a lot of testing, and I'm going to show you some of that testing because I don't think you'd even believe me, and that is the engagement range. If we take a look at the two engagement ranges that I'm highlighting here, you'll see that the fleet setting does not override the ship setting, and the ship setting doesn't override the fleet setting. What happens is... The AI looks at both of these settings. Again, the ships obviously have to be in a fleet, but once you've created a fleet with some ships, it looks at each individual ship, it looks at its engagement range, and it, and then it looks at the fleet setting here for the engagement range, and it says which one is more restrictive. Okay, so for example, here, the ones I have highlighted, on the left, the individual ship, the Wrathful Scourge, has <clears throat> do not engage. The fleet setting for all of the ships in the fleet are 50% of fuel range. So what's going to happen is the AI is going to say, oh, do not engage is much more restrictive. So I'm going to ignore the fleet setting for this particular ship. 
and I'm going to go with do not engage. Now, if other ships did not have this, if other ships had 50% of fuel range, then it's, it's going to be fine. They'll all do that. But this one ship will not engage. And it works the other way too. So if you have your ship setting, which you should, to engagement range in the system, right? In the current system. Then the fleet settings can be, when it's set to more restrictive, for example, do not engage, that will override all of the ship's engagement ranges that are less restrictive. Well, in that case, it doesn't matter what they are. It'll just do do not engage. So what the way this works well for you is you try to make your ships not restrictive at all. And then when you need to restrict them, you use the fleet setting here to restrict them. And that's really important. So for example, you might do that when you're retrofitting the, the fleet and you have a second fleet there guarding the system and you've got a spaceport guarding the system and you don't want them to keep getting interrupted during their retrofit or their refuel. So you could set the entire engagement range for the entire fleet right here on the right side to do not engage and it will overwrite because it's more restrictive all of the engagement ranges of all of the ships in the fleet and they will simply retrofit and ignore the fact that enemies are coming in. Now, of course, you got to be very careful and make sure you set that back to system or local or nearby or wherever else you want to set it to. So these two, nobody owns anything. They just uh, use the most restrictive setting there is. All right, let's see a demo of this and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so let's talk about engagement range for fleets and for ships. And let's see what kind of effect they have in getting my fleets to attack or defend a particular situation. So I've set up a situation here. I have a home colony here with a spaceport and I also have two fleets, which I've mapped to the keyboard. So there's fleet one and fleet two. And there's a pirate ship over here. There's a few pirate ships actually that'll zoom in, but there's one currently here attacking my research station at the moon of this uh, colony, my home colony. So what's happening? I'm looking at fleet two and it's engaging this enemy. But if I look at fleet one, it's not. And it all has to do with the engagement setting. So let's take a look at fleet two, first of all. So fleet two has its engagement range for the fleet to be the same system. And then each individual ship I'm overriding. I could go individually to each ship and set it, but it's just easier for me to demonstrate for you to use this override here. So when you select this, the default is here, right? But when you select this and say, let the fleet tactics override the ship tactics, and basically it gives you four of the tactics that you would normally set individually for each ship. Sorry, five of them. And I can override them. So in other words, when I change this to be same location or same system, what's happening is all of these ships are getting their individual settings changed, okay? Until they leave the fleet, of course, right? Or until I turn this off. So if I turn this back off, now it's using whatever the ships had uh, had set prior, which is usually the default that we do in the design screen. And now it's, of course, ignoring all those and using these settings here. So I'm just going to do this because it's so much easier than setting each ship. All right, so why are they attacking? Well, they are set for same location, same location, okay? And same location means any colony and its moons, all right? So it's a certain radius around any body, really, in this case, a colony, uh, is same location. Nearby is only near this home colony, okay? So I'm going to let this run a little bit because I did change these settings, so let me let this run, but you'll see that Fleet 2 is going to continue to engage, and here they come. But let's go to Fleet 1 and see why it's not engaging, okay? It has the same, it has the same home spaceport, it has everything else the same, except its engagement range for the fleet is nearby and for each individual ship is nearby. So it's not engaging because nearby only means around this colony here. Now, you think to yourself, all right, well, maybe if you change the fleet setting to be same location or even same system or anything less restrictive, that will make First Fleet attack. But as you can see, as I let the game run a short time, First Fleet is not engaging. Okay, 
Likewise, if I change this back to nearby, but I change the individual ships to be same location, which is exactly what Fleet 2 has, and let the game run, you'll see no engagement. But if I change them both to same location, let the game run, there it goes. First Fleet just engaged. So what happens here? The engagement ranges from both the fleet, which I'm showing you here, and the individual ships, which I'm overriding here, the most restrictive setting wins. So if I put the ships to be do not engage, but the fleet says same location, this fleet one makes no difference whatsoever, even if I set it to 50% fuel range uh, or 30% fuel range, 33% fuel range, which means out of the system. doesn't matter what I set this to. If the individual ships, whether it's set through this override or set manually earlier, are set to do not engage, they will not engage, okay? Because this is the most restrictive. So most restrictive is the highest visually here, but it's the lowest or most restrictive if you think about distance, right? So same system is the widest, that's least restrictive, and do not engage is most restrictive. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, if I set the ships to be same system, and I set this to be beyond same system, like sector range, 33% of fuel range, or 50% fuel range, what good are these settings? Good question. Now, I have played the game, and I have seen ships, uh, defensive ships, set on auto. I've seen ships set on auto leave the system to defend a nearby system. How that works and why that works sometimes, I can't really answer you. It does seem to be something either not in the design or it's not clear why it's happening. But in this particular situation, this setting is not going to help. It's not going to override this. So my only guess is that if this is set the same system and then this is 50% fuel range or 33% fuel range or same sec uh, sector range, then I'm guessing it may be activated by things outside the system but I, I don't know for sure, so I can't really tell you. But there seems to be, all, even in this case here, so let me set this back to be nearby, which is too restrictive here, and leave this to be 50% fuel range. You'll see, suddenly they stopped attacking, okay? So it's clearly using the most restrictive within system. Outside of the system, maybe this works, and maybe it works with automatic fleets, I don't know. Now, just to quickly show you automatic fleets, I didn't really wanna go into too much depth because that's a whole nother discussion but I'll quickly set this to be defense, which is an automatic setting. So the, fleet's, the fleet is not under my command anymore. And look what happens. The mission changes to defend targets within 50% fuel range of Burnett 3 spaceport. So that seems pretty clear to me, right? It seems like, well, it's going to defend anything in the system and outside of the system. But the, because this fleet, the individual ships, excuse me, the individual ship settings are set to nearby, it's not going to happen. So let me hit the space bar and show you. Nothing happens. First fleet does not engage. It's even on automatic. Even on automatic attack. And I hit, uh, I let this go. Nothing's going to happen. Okay. Now, the only thing that's happening is these ships are getting kind of close. So they're going to, as soon as they cross, I think halfway through this border. So if I let this run too long, the nearby is going to start to work. Okay. But you can see right now it's not working even on the auto settings. So it's super, super important that when you design your ships, right? And I think it defaults to this, but make sure you don't change it. That the engagement range for your ship by default is set to same system so that the restrictiveness doesn't override what you want your fleet to do. But it does make these three settings seem rather useless, even though I, as I mentioned, I've seen it work before. Uh, so there may be something more to this, and I'll go into that in another video perhaps. But basically, the rule is the most restrictive stops everything. So if I put this to do not engage, and I put this to be same system, and I let it run, first fleet will not engage no matter what. Okay, that's about it for engagement range. So make sure you uh, set your designs to work to be same system and then use this to restrict it as much as you want. So in other words, if your ships are always on the same system, the least restrictive, then you can control what you want to happen by modifying this, even though these three may or may not work, like I said, in a different situation. But now if you want your fleets not to uh, engage or only engage when attacked, for example, as I mentioned earlier, when you're retrofitting them, 
use this setting here, leave this one as least restrictive as possible for the ships and just control everything from here, even though anything beyond the same system, I'm not sure it's gonna work. Now watch, just, just to show you that I didn't disable the ships or something and tricking you. Now that I've set it both the same system, it will work. Watch, First Fleet is currently not engaged. As soon as I hit the space bar and unpause the game, there they go. So now First Fleet is engaging. So you can see they will engage as soon as the least restrictive setting works. Okay, let's talk about the tactic retreat when. All right, so I've got the same situation uh, earlier where I'm going to override my ship's tactics to do what I tell it to do here. So I'm going to set retreat when to be never, okay? That's for my ships. So these two individual ships that make up my fleet Omega here are now, each ship is programmed to not retreat ever. However, my fleet command has a retreat when also. And I'm going to say when enemy strength is greater. So if you look at my screen here, I've got a battleship here. I've got another battleship below. And these are two frigates. They're definitely outclassed. So the enemy strength greater is true. And it really should uh, retreat. Now watch what happens as soon as I let go. I'm going to click on one of the ships so you can see its orders. And you can see it's going to attack. Okay, so it's going to attack this uh, battleship even though it's outclassed. And the fleet orders also say attack. Okay, now if I set this to never, so that I, now I'm setting the fleet setting, the retreat when never, so the fleet has said don't retreat ever, but I'm going to individually set the ships to retreat when there's an enemy nearby or in the same system even. Uh, we'll just do enemy nearby. Okay, so you know, you're thinking, oh, well, the, the, the never is going to override it, the more restrictive one, just like in. Uh, the case of engagement range might override it. Let's see what happens, okay? Nope, now they're escaping. See, they're taking off, and this one's gonna... Well, the fleet order, see, is still saying attack, but each individual ship is escaping from here. So, you know, you may argue, whether well, they're not acting as a fleet. I don't know what makes them act as a fleet or not. So there's a lot of unknowns here. Is it because there's no admiral here? You know, what else could be causing this? I'm not sure, okay? But anyway, it seems like, to me... And there may be a condition when it starts to work, and that may be because of an admiral or something. But this retreat when here has no effect whatsoever. Now, I also thought maybe if I put the ship to defensive, right? So if I put an auto uh, fleet and see what happens when I put the fleet to auto. But even if I let this go, let's see what happens to the individual. Again, the fleet is still staying attack, right? But the individual ships are escaping. So let's see if they change their mind here. I can even stop them to see if they'll re-engage. Nope, they're still escaping. Even after I stop them, they still want to escape. So this setting here for the fleet, for Fleet Omega's setting retreat when for the fleet makes no, apparently makes no difference whatsoever. I could assign an admiral. Let's see if I have one here. Yeah, let's, let's pause the video and I'll assign an admiral and then we'll see what happens. Okay, so now I've added an admiral to the fleet. Uh, you can see he's right here. And we're going to see how that has any effect. And remember, my settings, again, are never retreat for the fleet, but the individual ships are retreating anytime there's an enemy nearby, okay? Uh, you can actually see what already happened because I already let it run, and they're trying to escape. So uh, the adding an admiral doesn't seem to make any difference. Now, the last thing I'm going to try is this. I'm going to make the, uh, if you look at Fleet Omega, Indomitable Hero is the flagship. So I'm going to manually set the flagship to stay. In other words, never retreat. But I'm going to make sure, and I'm going to turn off the fleet's settings, the overrides here, okay? And I'm going to make sure the other ship is running, okay? So I'm going to say retreat when enemy is nearby. So what I expect to happen, right, is that the Intrepid Liberty should run. And by the way, I'm going to stop them so they reset their orders here. Okay, stop them both. So now what should happen is, in theory, if the ship retreat when setting is overriding, this uh, Liberty ship is going to run and the hero ship is going to stay, right? Because that their, their ship settings are different. But let's see if this fleet setting of retreat never will override the Liberty ship, okay? So the key is to watch this Liberty ship and see if it uh, stay, fights or flees. All right, it's still running here. 
and the other one is attacking. Okay, so again, in every instance I can think of, uh, actually the other thing I want to do is set this to automatic. So let's let's reset the ships to stop. Stop escaping. He's already attacking, but I'll tell him to stop too. Okay, now I'm going to put the fleet to defensive. So now it's got an admiral. It's on auto. The fleet settings are never retreat, but the individual ships are different. One ship is, to, is set to stay, and the Liberty ship is, stay, is set to flee. So let's see what happens for this final, final test here. He's still running, and he's still staying. So what does that mean? It means that this individual fleet setting, as far as I can tell, sorry, that's not it right here. This individual fleet setting never, or whatever I set it to, makes no difference that I can see. There may be a case, maybe when these fleets are automated that I'm not thinking of or testing, but it seems like this has no bearing whatsoever. I didn't talk about attack stance. I didn't make a separate video for this. But if you test this, this also doesn't seem to make any difference. All right. So it's aggressive, neutral, cautious, and I cautious is for missiles. So it'd be great if I could tell the entire fleet to temporarily override. That's what I would like this to do. All of the settings of the individual ships. But in fact, it turns out that the individual ship settings override that. And this seems to have no effect. So basically, from my testing, and so far, I can't find any instance where this attack stance or the retreat when fleet setting does anything. It's, engagement range does do something, right? Engagement range, as we talked about, has the uh, more restrictive of the two will override. Okay, and of course, formation is not related to ships in that the ships don't have their own formation setting. So that's fine. And of course, this is just to, to tell you to let the fleet reassign the role. So I don't find this very useful. Retreat when attack stance doesn't seem to work. So the only fleet command that I really care about that seems to work for me is engagement range and formation. And again, this fourth one, not so important because it doesn't really change much unless you don't set those roles, as I mentioned earlier. Okay, so uh, before we wrap up, I just want to give you a warning about one of the settings that I've been using, and that's in the tactics settings for fleet. So let's make a fleet first. I'm going to take these two ships from our earlier video. Remember, this ship is set for aggressive to move in quick. And this ship was the missile ship is set to stay at range, right? So you remember it turned left and it backed up a little bit and this ship moved in really, really close. And I want to have my fleets be able to do that, to follow their ship orders as to how cautious or aggressive they want to be, or basically really in, in better English, how far they're going to stay from their target, how far they're going to try to stay from their target. So let me form a fleet with these two ships, all right? Uh, yeah, I'll just make a new fleet here. Okay, so I've got the, I guess I missed it. Okay. There we go, 13th, good, lucky 13th fleet. Okay, so I've created this 13th fleet. So remember, if I let the game run, even now, everything's set the way it is. If I let the game run, this ship's going to keep its distance and this ship's going to go in really close. And that's what we want. I showed you that earlier. The setting to a fleet is not going to change that. However, if I go to the tactics screen, and if you remember, I've been doing this for the, earlier in the video. If I override, so right now it's set by default to use the ship tactics, but if I override this and say use fleet tactics instead of ships, automatically these two attack stances, which I, re which I uh, demonstrated to you earlier and why they're so important, right? are now going to be overridden. I can't make them different. So I have to either set them both to cautious or I have to set them both to aggressive. And again, this is just two ships. If there was 30 ships in your fleet, all 30 ships would inherit this setting because of this override. Now you can turn it off again, but if you want to use you know, this engagement range that we talked about in the, in the earlier part of the video and you want to set that for all your ships, it's better to have set it earlier on in the design screen or separately manually for each ship, which could be a real pain than to do it here, because th basically you don't want to use this ever. Really. You don't want to override these ship settings. If you're going to have different tactics in the sense of attack stance for these ships and you want it to actually work. So let me show you, I'm going to override it. We're going to put them both to cautious or I'll actually I'll put them both to aggressive. And I'll show you that obviously both ships are going to go in and let's, uh, let the game run. I think I am not. Yeah, let me, let me attack. 
Okay, so they're both moving in, and now the missile ship is not trying to keep its distance like it was earlier. Okay, if I tell it to leave the fleet, it will. So if I, as soon as I leave the fleet, it's going to go back to its original settings and watch. It will back up. See, now it's going to find its maximum range again. But you see the disadvantage when you have a fleet. See, now he's at max range, which is where I want him. So you can see that when I go back to the fleet settings and I go back to these set tactics here, the uh, overriding your ships, you'll lose all that individuality that you've set up for each of your ships. And that's, uh, that's going to be a problem. So I talked about most of the tactics. I didn't go into retreat when. I think that's kind of obvious here. But I, you, I think you have a really good feel, overall feel, for how the tactic setting works, which one overwrites which one, which things to be careful about in the design screen uh, to either avoid this. If you do have ships set for different attack stances, avoid this altogether or how this actually works. So I think you have a good feel for that. I will go into a separate mechanic on defensive and, and attack fleets and how they are, uh, how I don't really like them a lot because they'll often leave a zone to go refuel or retrofit and all the disadvantages of them. And of course the advantages of them late game when you have so many ships and I certainly do use them on occasion. But we'll talk about the difference between manual and auto in another mechanics video. And I may get an update too as, as to some of the issues we talked about with engagement range at that time. But this should give you a real good overview of how tactical settings work and why some of you have been having some frustration with you know why the fleets aren't reacting the way I, I expected them to be. I hope this helped out a lot. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can be alerted when I get to that next episode in this series and also my other videos. And uh, good hunting.